Hello, good day, wherever you're watching me from all over the globe. We are Grace Community Church, Manchester. My name is Diron Oderindi. I'm one of the pastors in the church, and I'll be bringing us God's word on behalf of our senior pastor, Dr. Joe Mofuma, today. And I trust God that the Lord is going to bless us. Now, before we before the summer, let's just have a short word of prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this hour. We pray in the name of Jesus that you're going to speak to your people by yourself. Your people will hear your voice and the world will sow a seed in your life. And that seed will bring forth fruit and their life will not remain the same. Thank you, blessed Lord, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, thank you for stopping by. Yeah. Again, we are Grace Community Church. Now, we're going to be discussing something very important this morning. I managed to call it turning our crisis into an opportunity. Turning our crisis into an opportunity. See, how do you respond to a crisis? How do you respond to crises you face in your life? See, there are different kinds of crises. There are different types of crises. Crises in our health, you could face health crisis, you could face financial crisis, it could be a loss, it could be a crisis in your relationship, it could be in your vocation, your, your career, your business. But the question is, how do you respond when you are faced with crisis? Because, see, for every crisis, there is an opportunity. And if you respond the right way, you will profit from that crisis. On the other hand, if you respond in the wrong way, you may find yourself paying a big price. So the way we respond to crises or trial challenges we face in our lives is very important. See, there is a man in the Bible by the name Joseph. It's a very familiar story. For those of you that don't know uh, the story of Joseph, you're going to read uh, the book of Genesis. You can read the whole of from chapter 37 all the way to chapter 50. That captures the whole of the story of Joseph. Now, Joseph faced a, a lot of crises in his life. He experienced a lot of difficulties but he learned how to react wisely. See, today what I want to bring to us is for us to examine the life of Joseph. We'll look at the crisis he faced right from uh, his, his days as a very young boy. We'll look at the crisis that he faced and more importantly, how you responded to those crises. And how his response to those crises prepared him for a higher position. So if you can just go on this journey with me, if you have your pen and paper, there are loads of things to put down today. So it, it's more of a teaching. So I will, I, will, I will encourage you to get a pen and paper. now. The first crisis that Joseph experienced in his life was that he was hated by his brothers. The Bible says that on three different points, the Bible says that he was hated by his brothers. Not because of anything, just because he, he was the favorite of his father. He was hated by his brothers. And to, to top that up, he had a dream that one day his brothers were going to bow down to him. Of course, that's for that few, that, that hatred in the life 
of his father uh, feel that hatred, you know, towards him. But there is one thing. Even though Joseph lived in a, in a situation or in an environment where there was no love, where there was discouragement, where there was rejection by his 11 brothers, Joseph learned when the, where there was even ridicule and mistreatment. Joseph learned to react to all this negative emotion towards him without being bitter, resentful, or hostile. See, he learned to, even though, it, see, the thing, if you have ever been rejected by someone, rejection is a very strong, is a very painful emotion, especially by someone that you love. If you are rejected by someone that you love, very, it's, it's, if, if you have been in that situation, you understand what I'm take, talk, talking about. So when we visualize the life of Joseph and see him in the midst of 11 brothers, being eight head, it's a very strong emotion that can break someone, that can even lead to someone committing suicide. But even in the midst of that crisis, Joseph learned, there was a lesson that Joseph learned. He learned how not to be bitter, not to be resentful, and not to be hostile. Children of God, the situation you're going through right now, perhaps God is teaching you, even though you're being treated badly, people talk down on you, people see you as a never do well, they see you as someone that cannot make any good thing out of his or her life. But God is teaching, but God is teaching you something in that crisis. God is perhaps teaching you how not to be bitter to people that's, uh, that treats you badly. God is teaching you not to be resentful. See, I, I know one lady that she grew up with her stepmother. And throughout the period that he was with, in that home, she was treated, she was maltreated, seriously maltreated. But you know what? Despite this hostile situation around her, she this is a true life story I'm telling you. Now, despite the hostile situation around, around her, that did not stop her from loving her stepmother. And even when she left the house and became a successful woman, She still extends that love. Now, she was able to still extend love to her stepmom, despite the fact that now she's successful, she's got everything. She, can, she could decide to just shut that kind of a woman out of her life. But God has trained her. She has learned how not to be bitter to people who who treated her wrongly. So that was the first thing that, that Joseph learned. He learned not to be hostile for, to people who treated him wrongly. Another crisis in the life of, of Joseph, the second crisis is that he was when his brother threw him in a pit. Remember that story? His father asked him to go and check out his brothers in the field. And when his brother saw him approaching, they said, wow, this is a good time to take care of this boy. Let's deal with him. And you know what they did? They grabbed him, removed his clothes, and threw him in a pit. They killed an animal, splashed the blood of the animal on his garment and took it to the, to the father and said, oh, father, poor Joseph 
was murdered by a wild animal. Now, even though, when, um, even though Joseph was helpless in that pit, even though he could not save himself in that pit, he learned something in that crisis. He learned to completely trust God. There's no way he could have been out of that pit on his own. So he learned that God was completely trustworthy. Children of God, I don't know wherever you're watching me from, from the, all over the globe, that crisis you're going through, God is training you. God is training you to completely trust him. The Bible says that trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. It didn't say in some of your ways. It didn't say, the Bible says, it didn't say in some of your ways. It said in all of your ways, acknowledge the Lord and he will direct your path. So that crisis, that situation that you think that it's a crisis, it's actually a learning ground for you. That peace that you are right now, that's, that's a valley that you have ha right now. That unpleasant situation you're going through right now. God is teaching you to trust him completely. Not to lean on your own understanding. You perhaps have been trying to do things on your own. You perhaps have been trying to figure out fashion out things on your own. But God is using that pit situation that you are right now to teach you something that trust completely in him. So Joseph trusted God in that situation. Just as, see, you will, you will notice that for every crisis that Joseph went through, it was a preparation for something great in his life. So that challenge, that pit you are right now, it's a preparation for that exalted position that the Lord, that position that the Lord is taking you to. I don't know whatever crisis you are going through, it could be in your health, it could be in your relationship, it could be in your finances, it could be in your career, it could be with your children, relationship with your children. I want you to, to respond in a wise way, just like Joseph. Joseph learned to completely trust God in that peace. The thought crisis Joseph went through in his life, it was when he was sold into Egypt as a slave. The Bible says that uh, his brother sold him. When they said, oh, how can we deal with this guy? You know, throw him in the pits. He didn't die. So how else can we deal with this guy? He was sold into Egypt as, as a slave. Now, see, when, when, we, when we look at that situation, when, when we read that portion of the scripture, you just see, you, you might just look at it like, oh, yes, he was sold to him. Uh, to Egypt. But when we look at it deeply, that actually means, yes, see, Joseph is an Hebrew man, he was an Hebrew man. Now, that actually means that he was lost forever. Being sold to Egypt means that, oh, lost forever, he will never see his brothers again, he will never see his father that loved him so much. That was the implication of that. So when we expect that Joseph would have rebelled against his captors. He would have resisted that, no, I'm not going to get lost forever. There is a saying from where I come from that it's better to die than to be lost. So he probably would have said, okay, I'm just going to rebel against this guy. The worst case scenario is that I'm going to die, but I'm not going to be lost forever. But you know what? Rather than Joseph reacting like that, Joseph took the opportunity. He, he, 
So he took the opportunity to learn the Egyptian culture. He said, okay, if the next destination is Egypt, if the next destination is Egypt, then I will take the opportunity to learn the culture of the Egyptian, learn their language, trusting God that, trusting that God had a purpose for allowing that situation in his life. So that situation you have right now, why don't you sit back and communicate with your God and seek the purpose for that hardship, the purpose for that challenge, for that crisis. It could be God wants you to learn something, wants you to learn new skills, wants you to learn new ways of dealing with people, interpersonal skills, wants want you to learn something that will be valuable for you in your future life. Don't see that crisis as the hand for you. Don't see that crisis as the last bus stop in your life. But look at it in the lens, just the way Joseph looked at it. Opportunity to learn something new. The fourth crisis Joseph went through was when he was sold to Pharaoh's uh, chief bodyguard, that's Potiphar. When he was sold to Potiphar, now, uh, uh, Joseph leverage rather than Joseph you know, being you know, depressed about the situation that now he's not a slave. He used to be someone in, in his father's house, he used to be someone that is very likable. He used to be someone that is that is favorite of his father. Now he's a slave in Egypt. Joseph leverage on that fourth setback. You remember when he got to a Potiphar's house, the Bible says that the Lord was with Joseph and he was successful. It wasn't, it wasn't long before God, uh, before Potiphar made him see her over his, over his whole household. And you know what? Being, being a slave in Potiphar's house afforded him the opportunity to learn how the Egyptian family operated. He was in charge of all of Potiphar's. He was overseeing all, all, everything in Potiphar's house. So he learned how to how, how uh, the Egyptian upper class, the way they operate. He learned how to manage a large and prosperous household. He didn't look at himself that, no, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm an Hebrew, I'm, an, I'm, a, I'm a Hebrew man. I'm not supposed to be in Egypt, but took that opportunity to even learn how to be a leader. Like I said, he was made, you know, see of in charge of things in Potiphar's house. So that job that you see that it's not paying as much as you want. That job that you feel that oh, they're just you, 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 you're just giving out stuff. The remuneration is not good enough. God might be teaching you something. God might be teaching you that you should sit tight and learn a new thing that will help you in your future life. Joseph did not see being a slave in Potiphar's house as a crisis, but it took advantage of it, of it to learn something new. The fifth crisis in, in, in Joseph's life was when Potiphar's wife tried to seduce him. Now, she could have ruined him. Oh, no, let, let me rephrase that. Maybe he could have ruined himself. If he, had, if he had given him to Potiphar's wife, he could have ruined himself. But Joseph successfully resisted her. Even though that man being thrown into prison, he successfully 
resisted that. Now, there's one thing that Joseph learned there. He discovered his own strength to resist temptation and the depth of his devotion to the Lord. Whatever you, that, that situation you're going through right now, God might, might want you to discover something about yourself. God might want you to use the opportunity to discover Learn something about yourself that you have not learned before. Joseph was faced with that temptation and was able to discover his own strength to resist temptation and the depth of his devotion to God. See, the truth of the matter is that when you are not tested, there's no way you can get promotion. So if that crisis is testing you, is challenging you, is pushing you, then it is helping you to become more of who you are, you are meant to be. It is helping you to become more of who you are meant to be. But when you don't see it through that lens, you see it through the lens of, oh, this is a challenge that has come to ruin me, then you will not learn what you're supposed to learn. You will not learn your weaknesses. You will not learn your strength. You will not even learn the depth to which you can trust God, the depth of your the depth of your devotion to the Lord. You have not gone through tests, and you say you have passed. You say, you said, yes, I can resist anything. No, it is only when you are tested that you can come out boldly and say, Yes, I passed this test. Then I can move to higher ground. See, it looks like a test to everyone. But today, for, for, for Joseph, it's an opportunity to discover himself. The, the sixth crisis Joseph went through was the refusal to yield to Postfar's wife and handed him in prison. He ended up in prison. Just because he refused, he ended up in prison. Now, see, the thing is, when, of course, when he was in prison, the Bible says that uh, and the Lord was with jo uh, Joseph. And not too long, he was made, uh, uh, he, he was entrusted to be in charge of all the prisoners. Now, see, while he was in prison, he learned something very important. He, le he learned how not to treat, to treat others with kindness. He was in charge of the prisoners. He could have transferred the aggression. He could have said, oh, now I'm in charge. I will transfer the aggression of the fact that I did not do anything. I'm not supposed to be here. And transfer that aggression to the, to the other prisoners. Now that he's in charge. And when you think about it, that's what an average person would do. Okay, if they, if, if they succeed in dealing with me, then I will deal with you guys as well. But, David, but Joseph learned to treat others with kindness. But, but it, it wasn't surprising, though, because remember, he grew up amongst 11 brothers who treated him with hostility. And he has already learned that even in that kind of situation, that kind of environment, out not to respond in the wrong way. So him not being in charge of the prisoners was not difficult for him to treat them with kindness. See, the truth of my mother is that if he had not been prepared as a little boy in that hostile environment I'm, I'm, I'm amongst his 11 brothers, he wouldn't have been able to treat those prisoners with kindness. He had a training ground, even though that training ground seems like crisis, but it was a training ground for him. He learned to treat others with kindness. The seven crises he went through. It was when he was called upon to interpret 
uh, Pharaoh's dream. See, the thing is that when we look at it, he could have, if, if the Lord has not revealed those things to him, he would have, he could have appeared before Joseph, uh, before uh, uh, Pharaoh, and mess up. And do you know the outcome of that? What would have happened to him? He would have been killed. But, you know, when he explained that dream to Pharaoh, that there will be seven years of abundant bounty, that would, that, and after that, there will be seven years of absolute nothing, that, that, that Pharaoh should prepare for that seven years of absolute nothing. The Bible says that in response to that, Pharaoh may, promoted him and made him second in command. He made him second in command. He made him in charge of food administration in the whole of Egypt. Now, see, Joseph was successful in that role. Do you think Joseph would have been successful in that role if the crisis he has faced right from when he was a little boy in his house? In, in his father's house. Do you think he would have been successful in that role if those crises had not shaped him? Now, see, for every crisis that Joseph went through in his life, it was an opportunity to develop himself into a wiser and godlier person. For this role, this exhaust, exalted role, that he, 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 he found himself. If those crises have not shaped him, if they have not prepared him, he would have messed up as a second in command. See, if you, if you look at it, the second in command to Pharaoh, it means that he, after Pharaoh hmm, is in. So he would have been able to assume that responsibility successfully if those crises have not helped him along, if those crises have not prepared him. He had he just have used each crisis in his life as an opportunity to develop himself. So the Lord is telling you today that those challenges that you're facing right now, why didn't you use it to develop yourself? Why didn't you use every, like I said earlier, in every crisis, there is an opportunity. Rather than dwelling on the crisis why don't you seek search for the opportunities in the midst of that crisis i'm going to round up with that. i just want to give us some bullet points on how to turn a crisis into an opportunity i'll, I'll try and just give us some bullet points before my time uh, <clears throat> um, if i have enough time now if you have a pen, you can you can pen this down. Now, one of one of see oh, see the thing is all this point I want to give to you. I can assure you that the work, the work. So one of the ways we can turn a crisis into an opportunity is to trust that God is working everything in your life for your good. That's the first point. Trust that God is working everything in your life for your good. Romans 8, 28, for we know that, that everything works together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. All that challenge is working together for your good. That situation is working together for your good. Another way, another point is that that believe that God is in control of everything. So when you believe that God is in control of anything, you believe in the sovereignty of God, it's easier for you to retain your hope. Even, when, even if you don't understand the reason why you are going through that challenge, that crisis, but when you believe in the sovereignty of the, of the Lord, it will be easier for you to retain your hope. If you believe that God is in control of everything, is the Alpha, is the, is the Omega, is the beginning and the end. Another point is that accept that the Lord's way are higher than yours. Accept that the Lord's way are higher than yours. 
Isaiah 55, verse 8 to 9. He said, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts, and my ways are higher than your ways. He said, as the heaven is, is higher than the head, so are my thoughts higher than your thought, and my ways higher than your ways. Sometimes we plan some things for our children. We, we try and figure out how um, things will work for our children. But at the all, we try and figure out things will work for our family, how things will work in our career. But do you know what? The thought of the Lord is higher. God's ways are higher. And if we accept that, You, it will help you to go through any crisis. It will help you to go through, even when those things you have mapped out is not working well, it will help you to deal with that situation. So don't lose hearts, children of God. Simply trust God's intimate involvement in your life. Don't lose heart. Next point is that refuse to make quick judgments in the midst of a crisis. Very critical. Refuse to make quick judgment. Rather than making quick judgment, ask God, God, what are you doing in my life? Ask him that question. Rather than quickly jumping into see people that jump into making quick, people that jump into uh, making a, a quick judgment end up in even much more, you know, deadlier crisis. Sit back. Ask God. God, what are you working out in my life? The next point is that focus on God rather than the crisis. Focus on God rather than, and let me tell you a practical way to focus on God rather than crisis. Meditate on the scriptures. That will fill your awareness of God's comfort and his unconditional love. Meditate on the scriptures. As you meditate on the scriptures, on the scriptures your, your, your mind is taken away. Your focus is taken away from that crisis. The next point, which is similar to this last point, is avoid dwelling on the pain. It's normal to, to, to feel bad. It's normal. See, if you go through crisis and somebody saying that, why are you, be, why are you, you know, reacting this way? Ask the person to go through the same thing. And let's see how the person is going to react. So it's normal for us to, uh, at first, you know, react in, in a way that is not pleasant, but avoid dwelling on that, on the pain. Instead of fixating on the grief, Go to the ultimate source of strength, the word of God. Go to the ultimate source of strength, the word of God. I move on to the next point. Recall past crises and the opportunities that followed. The past crises that, follow, that, that you have experienced in your life. Try and recall them, bring them back to memory, flashback, and look at what God was able to do, how God shaped you, what happened, the opportunity that followed that crisis. Because you know, when you seek, when you see God's work through past hardship, through past crises. It will encourage you in your current trial. Let me quickly move on to the next point. Next point is that let go of your hunger immediately. Even if you feel upset at first, don't let that emotion take root in your life. Don't let that emotion that anger take root in your life because the thing is that when you release such irritation 
It frees you to see God's purpose in your situation. It frees you to see God's purpose in your circumstances. When, but if you remove, if you refuse to remove that anger, that irritation, you will not even be able to see what God is working out. That takes me to the next one. You determine to view the trial as a chance as a chance to see God, to see God's work, God at work. View it is an opportunity to see God as work. If you have never, if you have not, if you have not practically see God working before in your life, when you go through difficult situations, it's an opportunity to sit back and see God working. So that at the end of the day, you can be able to give testimony to people that perhaps that don't believe in God. You have to tell them that, yes, God indeed work wonder. God indeed can work wonders. That brings me to the next one, that you, are, you refuse to listen to unscriptural, unscriptural interpretation of your situation. Yeah, this point is very important. Refuse to listen to unscriptural interpretation of your situation. See, no matter how well-meaning people are, no matter how well-meaning other, others are, they are not in your exact situation. They are not in your exact situation. So if anybody should come to you and try to give you some interpretation that is unscriptural, do not listen. And that is the reason why you have to be rooted in the word of God yourself. Because that is the only way that you'll be able to be able to identify when people are giving you unscriptural interpretations. When people go through two situations, you see all sorts of people coming to give advice. People that have never been through that kind of situation, they will, everybody will have something to say. Everybody will have something to say. But you know what? Refuse to listen to a scriptural interpretation of your situation. I'm rounding off now. Now, th this point is very important. Remain in constant prayer. Remain in constant prayer. Listen to God. Instruction. When you pray, you listen to God's instruction. When you go through that kind of, when you go through crisis, you go through life trials, make sure that one thing is not left out. Praying without ceasing. Praying without ceasing. And not only praying, take time to listen to God's instruction. I tell people, prayer is not a monologue, it's a dialogue. Prayer is a dialogue. So when you pray, try and listen to God. What is God telling you? What direction is God asking you to take? The next point. Do not give him to fluctuating emotions. Do not give him to fluctuating emotions. When you pray and the situation doesn't seem to change, you may want to give up. But remember, that's the enemy. That's the enemy that is telling you, oh, oh you know what? It's not going to work. Why didn't you just give in? That's the enemy. Resist that temptation. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23, it said, let, all, let us hold fast the confession of her hope without wavering. There's a way you can hold on to the confession of your hope and be wavering. But the Bible says that let us hold fast without wavering, without fluctuating. For he who promised is what? Is faithful. For he who promised is faithful. Do not give up. When you pray, it seems that the result is not coming yet. Do not give in to fluctuating emotion. 
Finally, my final point, my final point. I love this point. It, this point is my, is my watchword in life. Anything I face in life, any situation I find myself, it's my line. Obey God and leave all the consequences to him. Obey God and leave all the consequences to him. No matter what, know that God loves you and he is in control of your life. God loves you, he is in control of your life. He will not allow you to be overwhelmed by that crisis. He loves you so much. Do you, know, do you know the extent of God's love for you? The Bible said that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Can you give your own son because you love someone? But God did that. He gave his own, only begotten son to as proof of his love. So God loves you and is in control. You cannot go wrong by trusting your entire life to him. You cannot go wrong by trusting your entire life to him. The Bible says in Isaiah 43, verse 2, he said, when you pass through water, I will be with you. He said, when you pass through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, he said, you shall not be born, nor shall the flames crush you. Psalms 55, verse 22, he said, cast all your burden upon the Lord and he will sustain you. He, he shall never permit the righteous to be moved. The Lord will not permit that crisis to submerge you. So why don't you trust the God that has promised you all of this? Why don't you trust the God that has promised you all of this? If you're watching me, I don't know wherever you're watching me from all over the world, if you're going through any situation right now, there is a call for you to trust the Lord. But do you know one thing? The first crisis in life that you need God's support for, the first crisis in life that you want God to take you out of is a life without him. A life without Christ is in crisis, they say. So if you're still living your life outside of God, outside of Christ, is a life in crisis. So that's the first crisis you want God to help you out of. Is my prayer this day that the Lord will touch your heart and you will turn to the Lord to help you in your life crisis. If you're watching me right now and you want, you, you want to use the opportunity to give your life to Christ so that you can get out of life crisis, why don't you just close your eyes right now? And say this prayer with me. You say, dear God, I believe that you died for my sins. Right now, I turn from my sins and open the door of my heart and life. I confess you as my Lord and personal Savior. Thank you, blessed Lord, for accepting me in Jesus mighty name. Amen. If you have said that prayer right now, look for a Bible-believing church around you that can help you in this journey. And if you are in the Manchester area, you can check our website, get in touch with us, Grace Community Church. We will be glad to disciple you. So thank you everyone for being part of this broadcast this day. I pray that the Lord will be with you as we go through the week. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.